It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by... Hi, I'm Chris Janke, host of Health in the Real World podcast. I love being healthy and fit, but sometimes I'm not a big fan of gym culture, if you know what I mean. You can be fit and trim without a gym. Text the word WORKOUT to 408-883-4442. Hello and welcome to Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Janke. And I'm joined today by Robin Malmason. Robin is a holistic life coach whose purpose is to empower people to care for their health and to create the life that they want to live. Robin, thank you so much for joining me today. Chris, thank you for having me. I'm grateful to be here. Absolutely. Um, fill in uh, a little bit more about yourself. Go a little bit into depth. Uh, you know, talk to everyone about who you are, maybe how you got into this and, and kind of what you do to help people. Yeah, so yeah, it's true that this holistic life coach is kind of a, a big word. And what does it mean, really? So how did I get into this? It's, it really started with, for vanity reasons, initially, getting into, you know, working out for aesthetic reasons. But it quickly switched from a fitness and aesthetic, like, main drive, in a way, towards a more like health. I just want to feel good because what I have come to realize is that the more healthy we are, the more potential we have to experience life in its fullest, right? And nothing can buy or replace health. So it took me down many rabbit holes. <laughs> I explored many, many approaches. And what I have realized is that I actually wanted to share with other people. And um, I have always been kind of enjoying taking the role of the teacher and sharing things that I have learned. And so it dawned on me that at some point, hey, why don't I just share what I've learned about health and actually, as you just read, empower people to take care of their health. Now, what do I do is... I, first of all, my, really my first assumption is that everybody, like our default state is health. The body knows how to heal itself. We just need to provide the right inputs, but we are not fixing anything. Nobody is broken and no body is broken, right? right? So with that in mind, I like to look at the person in its entirety, hence the holistic so it's not just a workout. It's not just a nutrition. It's also how are your relationships? Are you fulfilled in your career? Um, how, are you spending time in nature? All of these things. And like many people, like many coaches in this field, I help people deal with stress, anxiety, low energy. But I don't go straight necessarily to let's go to the gym for all these reasons. Like it, I really try to meet people where they are at and help them make progress, whatever that looks like for them. That's perfect. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm i fond of saying that fitness is only two steps, figure out where you are and then just take one step from there. That's, yeah. um, you, you know, you mentioned you went down a few rabbit holes when you were sort of getting into this and getting yourself healthy. What, what were some of those rabbit holes? Cause I know you mentioned also before we hit record that there's a lot of misinformation out there, you know, it's the age mm -hmm. of information, but, but with good information also comes bad information. So what were some of those rabbit holes and how did you correct those in your own personal self? Yeah, that's a great question. So now that you say that out loud and I hear it back, there is misinformation, but it's especially a lot of information without context mm. and so i say that because for example let's say let's take the example of diets i have had a period where 
where I was really indoctrinated into keto, right? The ketogenic diet. And I had absolutely no context. So I tried to apply what I heard. And based on my context, my environment, uh, it did not work at all for me. And it was a few years ago. And now, like this winter, and I this, actually even right now, I'm still in ketosis, but I feel great. So it's a matter of context. Uh, another example would be when it comes to training, I've done like many modalities. I've done the bodybuilding style more than the powerlifting style. Nowadays, I really like, I don't even have a gym membership anymore, but I have like the more the unconventional, unconventional tools like the kettlebells, the Bulgarian bags to work more like different planes of movement. Um, and probably the biggest rabbit hole that is that I really dove into is more like the quantum biology. So, what? How does biology works at more at a more at like a more fundamental level below biochemistry? Mm. Because most of the especially nutrition, it's all like chemistry, like the proteins, carbs, fats. But actually, there is a level more fundamental underneath that. And from the perspective of the body, there is no proteins, carbon, fat. The body only uses electrons, protons, and receives photons from light. So by understanding how it fundamentally works, you can, oh, you can adjust your lifestyle accordingly. And what I have really enjoyed with this specific rabbit hole is that, well, I like the science, but it can be complicated. However, the takeaways are easy and they make a massive difference. That's awesome. I, I really like that. The context. That's a question that I get a lot too. It's like, is this workout style good or is that workout style good? And it really does depend. It depends on your goals. It depends on what are you doing right now? What's your lifestyle now? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let, we'll, we'll go back real quick and then we'll start coming forward in time. So for you personally, you, you start, you tried keto, you said you tried bodybuilding, you tried powerlifting, um, you know, tried a lot of things, sort of gone down your investigative rabbit holes. And then what was, wh what were some of the results for you? Like um, more energy, weight loss, like what, what happened kind of in that time where you started to transition from someone who's looking for information, you found some information, you applied it, and then, then you then you have that heart of a teacher, you said, then you took that next step. So what did that process kind of look like for you? So I would say the examples you named the fat loss, that, that happened. Um, the more energy, yes. Less anxiety, yes. Low, lower stress, yes. But I would say the most important change I've noticed and this is what we already mentioned earlier, and that's what I teach now, is I feel more able to deal with whatever arises. So this empowerment. And that's kind of the, really this discussion of how does information become empowerment? It's when we know when to apply it in the right context based on what arises. Um, like a simple example, another rabbit hole I dove into is the world of breath work. Mm. Now, a lot of people might know, for example, the Wim Hof, the Wim Hof method. But for example, it's very specific, the Wim Hof method. It's very stressful, like it's very fast or yang, if you go from a Chinese medicine perspective, as opposed right. to yin. And but if you understand the principles behind it, behind breath, breath work, you know when to use which breath, right? If you need to um, like bring up some alertness for like a conversation, like you and I, you do a specific breath pattern. But if you have anxiety and you can't fall asleep, you do another kind. Mm -hmm. So really like this process has allowed me to know myself i really discovered what works for me 
what doesn't, and the exploration of all these modalities allowed me to really get into my body because I believe that one of the diseases of this age is we are too much in the head. Like the yeah. age of information, it's all in the head. Yes. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm really scientific. I'm really like, I tend to be really brain dominant, but the more I actually go down into my body, the more bi- balanced I feel, right? So knowing myself and just knowing how to handle life because ultimately we don't know what's going to happen. We pretend like we do, <laughs> but we never know. And so the that's what I usually say to my clients is like the only way to save yourself from anxiety is not to try to anticipate or predict the future. It doesn't work. And that's what we tend to do automatically. Right. It's instead, number one, accept that it, you don't know. And number two, develop the trust in yourself that no matter what happens, you can deal with it. Mm, no matter what happens. That, yeah, I love that. It's that adaptability. It's, um, and, and I love what you're saying about turning health information into power. Is that <laughs> something that it seems like I've noticed this. If you give the same information to a group of people, there are going to be some people who just take that information and run with it. And they, all of a sudden it becomes part of their life and they're, they're implementing it and they're seeing results. And then there are other people who are not doing that. It, is that something that you feel like taking that information, turning it into power? Uh, do you feel like that sort of has come naturally to you or is it something you had to develop or was there, was one of these modalities sort of help you with that? How did that come about? lots of failure you try a lot of things um i i i like i i fell into every possible trap um going back for example to the <clears throat> gym example or like following a specific bodybuilding routine because it's the best that will give you the best results but hey if you haven't slept last night the best thing that will give you the most results in the long run is to take a nap. Right. Right. And so in other words, what has allowed me to now be in this place of knowing, be adaptable, as you said, or like I would like to use the word resourceful, um, is to suffer from pain, from being obstinate, essentially. Like when, like when I was t- trying keto the first time, as I told you, I stayed on the diet even though I felt like crap. Like I, I couldn't sleep. I could not even, even like uh, ride my bike. I was so mm. sore and everything. Wow. Um, and so it's like this trial and error with a lot of, unfortunately, pain that allowed me to step back and, oh, oh. It's like the what you said earlier, it depends. It's like really a matter of context. And I find that most people, like a big majority of people get into health because of pain. They don't want to be, they, 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 like it's, I don't want to be stressed anymore. I don't want to right. be anxious anymore. These are all forms of pain. And that's why we usually get into health uh, but the b- beautiful thing is that pain is a beautiful teacher. If you see that way, if we see it that way, mm. uh, the problem is like when we try to numb the pain and keep going with whatever we are doing. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the short answer would be pain has allowed me to come to this place of, oh, now I understand. Now I, I, I'm like, I accept what is, uh, but yeah, now it allows me to really share it with other people. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So I agree with you. It, failure, pain, it's a great way to learn. Um, I'm just right now stepping into maybe a potential client of yours who's listening to you and going, oh, great. I'm going to work with this guy. It's going to be painful. Is there, how, how would you talk to that person? Is that, or is that just a person that you're like, look, you need to get, you need to wrap your head around the fact that it's not going to be easy. 
or is there something else that you would maybe say to them? Yeah, so it's not that it's going to be painful. It's that usually people are compelled to reach out to someone for help or get into health because of their current state of pain. Mm, good to say. So yeah, yeah. Right. So it's, I mean, I look fat, or like I feel like I'm too fat. It's a form of pain. It's psychological yes. pain. Therefore, I'm going into fitness. Or I have low energy. Therefore, I cannot experience life as I want. That's a kind of pain. Therefore, I will seek help. Now, that's what your question. So I hope this makes the distinction. But your yeah. question made me think about something is the um, no pain, no gain mentality. To go yes. hard, try harder. Hmm. And it's more of a very common belief than the truth. I am actually way more about ease, especially when it comes to health, than working harder. As I said earlier, I fundamentally believe that the default state of the body is health. Yeah. So we don't have to try hard to be healthy. And it should actually feel better the more aligned and balanced we are. So it's actually more of a path for me, at least. It's more a path towards ease. And the more ease, generally speaking, you feel, the more you are on the path, essentially. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I, and I was, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So like the simplest example is like, hey, I was supposed to train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But Wednesday, I feel like crap. Yeah. Well, the path of ease is to postpone to Thursday. Mm -hmm. oh, but of course, now we can, can get into the discussion of there is the voice of the ego that says, no, like, what it, what, like you're going to lose all your gains if you postpone right. and you take a rest day. I right. went through this phase as well, like really insecure about like the my aesthetics and thinking I had to be like absolutely perfect on the routine, otherwise dot dot dot. Right. The fact of the matter is the more the more you work with the body, the better it will be. 100 percent Yep. Nice. This is awesome. Well, um, we are, we're getting a little bit close to the end. I want to make sure you uh, get a chance to give your motivational speech at the end of every episode. I like to have my guests give their motivational speech. Let's say they're at like a college graduation or a, a corporation. The title of your speech is how I think you can get the most out of your life. What would you tell these people um, in order to motivate slash inspire them? So before I say something, I just want to be to caution with like the word motivation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wait for motivation to come before they take action. And motivation, like it's like any emotion, it comes and goes. So if you wait for motivation to come, you rely on something external to take action. And so it's disempowered. Do you see what I, where I'm going? Now, when it comes to this motivational speech, I would say in the same way that the body knows how to heal and thrive, we are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit. credit. It's just that we tend to shoot ourselves in the foot. But the fact of the matter is, if you wake up every morning and ask yourself, what else is possible? Just this open question. Don't necessarily try to think about an answer like intellectually, but just open up the possibility of what else is possible right now. And I think the most fundamental power that we all have is that we can always, always choose our intention nobody can take this away from us away from us so 
if you ask yourself, what else is possible for me today? How do I want to show up today? Then you can then choose to be that way throughout the day. And that's okay if you fail, because that's part of the learning process, as we discussed. But nothing is stopping you but your own limitations that you created. And so getting into the practice of asking these open questions, you will realize, oh, there is so much more potential within me, so much more. And it's actually more of a getting rid of those limitations than trying very hard to reach our fullest potential. It's more like letting go of what is blocking us than the striving super hard because ultimately we want to be ourselves, right? We don't want to try very hard to be someone else. So, yeah, it's essentially like wake up. Who do you want to be today? What's possible for me today? What do I want to create? And you can choose to be that. And that's the most to me at least, that's the most beautiful power that we all have. Wow. Yeah, very true. Very true. Well, Robin, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, email, website, social media? Uh, I'm mostly present on Instagram. So thank you for the question. And yeah. it's at the Daologist in one word. So T-H-E-D-A-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, the Daologist. Perfect. So people can just reach out, DM, and uh, from there, they will also see my website, although I mainly use Instagram, but yeah, that's the main place. Got it. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. You know, I love, I think you have a very, uh, well, to use the word again, holistic, very uh, in-depth view of what health is. Like you said, the workouts, the sleep, the nutrition, it all, the relationships, it all goes together. And I uh, appreciate you joining me today. And, uh, and we'll definitely be in touch. So again, this is Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Janke, joined today by Robin Malmason. Robin, thank you again so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.